So right now the coronavirus pandemic causing more disruption to school campuses across the valley, Olivia. This morning we know a second school is closing its doors after welcoming on campus learners. Earlier this week, the Pinal County Health Department had shut down Sandtown Foothills High School in the Florence School District due to a cluster of COVID-19 cases. Students are back online for distance learning there until at least next Wednesday. And we're also learning the University of Arizona canceling spring break to try to stop the spread of COVID-19 on campus. And right now, the latest school to announce that they have to close their doors again, Combs High School in the Far East Valley. So that's where we find Jamie Serretta this morning with more on what the school is saying. And, uh, you know, ironic because this school and the conversation about returning to in-person learning uh, was front and center. No doubt about it, and Combs High School is now closed for in-person learning for at least two weeks now, this after an outbreak of COVID-19. Combs becomes the second high school in this area closed by Pinal County officials. In a letter sent home to parents, the J.O. Combs superintendent says the individuals who tested positive were last on campus on Tuesday. We do not know how many students or staff are positive, but we do know the number of students potentially exposed and asked to quarantine is so high district leaders made the decision to switch back to online learning. They call it a proactive measure to protect students and staff from exposure to COVID-19. Now you, you might remember this is the school district where more than 100 teachers staged a sick out back in August concerned that something like this might happen. We covered that story very closely at one point some students and parents even marching to support going back to in-person learning. Now, district officials hope to reopen this campus on October 27th, but that really is contingent on how many people end up contracting COVID from this outbreak. Back to you. All right, Jamie, uh, you know, this back and forth between in-person learning and virtual or distance learning, it's got to be taking a real toll on the kiddos. It's so difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The back and forth and inconsistencies are tough. Erin is joining us live this morning now with some advice for families who are struggling to learn how to cope the best with these evolving situations. Yeah, guys, it can't be easy on the families, but definitely on these kids who are trying to get back to in-person learning. And then a lot of them, their schools are forced to close once again. Now, we actually headed to pediatrician Dr. Strubel's office to get some answers about whether or not these openings and closings of schools and all this uncertainty right now during the pandemic is taking a toll on children. Now, Dr. Strubel says she hasn't really seen any physical symptoms or signs of the virus or things in kids, but mentally, kids are being impacted. She said kids really need social engagement and relationships as well as structure that in-person learning provides. And while there may be one or two cases of people infected at these schools here and there, uh, she's encouraging these schools as well as the kids to keep following the safety, social distancing and CDC guidelines so the schools can remain open. And really not to ease up on these safety measures, especially when it comes to these older kids. I do think that it's very important to have parents hold their teens accountable. It's okay if they have some social interaction, but to go to big gatherings, that's what's really a concern because that's where kids are infecting each other because they're oftentimes simply not able to do all those things, take all those measures that help keep themselves self safe and then help keep their family safe as well. And the doctor also says that many times kids learn how to react in these situations from what they see their parents and other adults exhibit. So she's encouraging everyone to stay vigilant, keep practicing those safety and social distancing measures and, and do not ease up on them, even as things are opening up to help yourself as well as your children. Reporting live in Phoenix, I'm Erin LeBeau for Arizona's Families.